Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm Manhar and welcome back to our SFT webcast. In this video, we are going to learn the steps on how to manage Hyper-V with Windows Admin Center. There are several tools available for managing Hyper-V remotely such as Hyper-V Manager, Windows PowerShell and Windows Admin Center. In the previous video, we installed Windows Admin Center on a Windows Server 2025 core machine. In this video, let's use Windows Admin Center for remote management of Hyper-V. First, let's modify some Hyper-V host settings. Click on Settings. Look at the Hyper-V host settings group. On the Hyper-V host settings, click on General. By default, Hyper-V stores all virtual machine files on your system partition. We want to store them on different disk. Click on Storage. We have attached a dedicated disk to store the VM configuration files and VHDX files. Select disk 1 and initialize the disk with the GPT partition style. Successfully initialize the disk 1. Select disk 1 and click on Create Volume. Specify the required information and click Submit to create a new volume on disk 1. Go to the Volume tab to verify that the volume has been created successfully. Go back to Server Settings. Click on General. Click on Browse and select the location where you want to store the VHDX files. Create a folder named VHDS on the E drive and select it. Again, click on Browse and select the location where you want to store the VM configuration files. Create a folder named VM files on the E drive and select it. Click on Save to apply the changes. Now we have successfully changed the virtual hard disk and virtual machine path on this Hyper-V server. Click on Enhanced Session Mode. Select the checkbox and click on Save to allow Enhanced Session Mode. Click on Live Migration. You can enable or disable Live Migration on Hyper-V from here. Click on Storage Migration. From here, you can specify the number of storage migrations that can be performed on the server at the same time. You can set up these settings as per your organization's requirement. Windows Admin Center can be used to create and manage virtual machines. Windows Admin Center uses extensions that provide the underlying functionality working with various technologies including Hyper-V. The virtual machines and the virtual switches extensions are used for Hyper-V management. Scroll down and click on Virtual Machines. The Virtual Machines section in Windows Admin Center is only available if the Hyper-V rule is enabled on this server. We can use the Virtual Machines tool to manage Hyper-V host running Windows Server either installed with desktop experience or installed as server core. Let's create a new VM using Windows Admin Center. Click on Add and select New. Enter a meaningful name for your VM. Select Generation 2 which is recommended option. Choose a path for the virtual machine files. Since we changed the default path earlier, the custom path is now selected. Select the number of virtual processors and whether you want nested virtualization enabled for the VM. Under Memory, select the amount of startup memory and specify the minimum and maximum range for dynamic memory as applicable to be allocated to the VM. On the network, select the external virtual switch from the drop-down list. Set to default if the VM is connected to the virtual switch in access mode or set to VLAN if the VM is connected to the virtual switch over a VLAN. Specify the VLAN identifier as well. Let's scroll down and now we have the option to specify information about storage. Click add and select whether to create a new empty virtual hard disk or to use an existing virtual hard disk. If you are using an existing virtual hard disk, click Browse and select the applicable file path. Under the operating system, select Install an operating system later if you want to install an OS for the VM after the VM is created. Select Install an operating system from an image file, click Browse, then select the applicable ISO image file to use. When finished, click Create to create the VM. Let's wait for a few seconds. We can verify the VM has been created successfully. Let's create an internal virtual switch on the Hyper-V host. Click on Virtual Switches. 
You can see we have one existing external virtual switch on a Hyper-V server. Click on New. Specify the name for the virtual switch. From the drop down list, choose the type of virtual switch you want to create. In this example, we want to create an internal virtual switch. Click on Save to create a new virtual switch. We can confirm that the internal virtual switch has been created successfully. Click on Windows Admin Center and click on Add. Under Server, click on Add button. Type the host name or IP address of the server you want to add to Windows Admin Center. Click on Add button to add that server to Windows Admin Center. Click on Hyper-V01. This is my physical Hyper-V host on which the TSLAM has been created. Let's scroll down and click on Virtual Machines. Turn on the Detailed Mode. Let's wait for a few seconds to allow Windows Admin Center to load Virtual Machines inventory. There are variety of settings that you can change for a VM using the Windows Admin Center. Click on ws 2 k 25 VM. Click on Settings. On General tab, you can change the VM name. You can also change the default VM Start and Stop actions by selecting the appropriate settings from the drop-down boxes. From Memory section, we can change VM Startup Memory, Dynamic Memory Range, Memory Buffer Percentage and Memory Weight. Select Processes to change the number of virtual processes assigned to the VM. We can also enable nested virtualization from this menu. We also have one more option named Processor Compatibility which is helpful in Windows Failover Cluster. Go to Disk section. From here, we can mount an ISO image to our virtual machine. For that, we just need to select this radio button and click on Browse to select the location where you have stored the ISO image. To add a new virtual disk, select Add Disk and then select whether to create an empty virtual disk or to use an existing virtual disk. Click on New Virtual Hard Disk. Change the VHD name, location, type and size according to your requirements. When ready, click on Create. Then click on Save Disk Settings. Successfully save the disk settings. You can explore other sections as I want to be covering all of them in this video. Now click on Virtual Machines. Click on WS2K25 Virtual Machine. Under Properties, we can see the basic information about that virtual machine. Under VHD section, we can see we have added two virtual disks to this virtual machine. Under Checkpoints, we can see we have created one checkpoint on this date and time. Let's go to the top. Click on Power at the top and select Start to power on the VM. Under Properties, we can verify that the virtual machine state is now running. Click on Connect at the top and select Connect. Enter Login Credentials and select this checkbox. Click on Confirm and click on Connect. We can interact with the guest VM through the remote desktop web console which is integrated into Windows Admin Center. It uses VM Connect to connect to the guest VM through the Hyper-V host. This is how we can create and manage virtual machines using Windows Admin Center. There are other VM management options available which we will cover in upcoming videos. That's all for this video on how to manage Hyper-V with Windows Admin Center. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Hyper-V and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.